Yes, uh, the man I'm with needs no introduction. Uh, he's literally the most viral man on planet Earth. I think I saw Ibuka's tweet where he said, uh, you are the luckiest guy in the world. <laughs> How so? I don't... I, I haven't even been online that much, I know, honestly. I know. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the winner of Big Brother Niger lockdown. And I think I'd have to start with saying that your win was not just um, ordinary, it was divine. And I could, the, the love you are getting now is really very authentic because people just connect with you. People, a lot of people connected with you, you know, from the day one where you were just literally getting trolled, you know, about your outfits. In fact, yeah. I even made a joke about it, you watched it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I saw it. I saw it. <laughs> but it's funny. Basically, I, I feel like it's, it's, I knew it. Yeah. Neil, Neil told me regardless, just yeah. put it on. Because I wasn't going to put on the light. the light. But Neil said, just put it on. Trust me, I think it was one of the things that spiraled. Because how, how the world works is you just need to get people's attention first. And then they now look deeper. Because it was the lights, a lot of people were trolling you online. You know, even in my review show. Because my review show is a satirical show. Yeah. You know, it's a funny show. You exactly. Know? I also made fun of the outfit saying that you brought all the Nepal wire. Exactly. In your area and you brought it. So that created the buzz. And then your team, they were now putting your EP out there. Like alongside. So while you were turning, they'll be like, oh, while you people are trolling Lekon, please watch his or listen to his Wonderful. EP. Do Wonderful. you understand? And then people now started seeing you know you for who you truly are which is you are a true artist okay okay so yeah um i'd like you to see this as a therapy session not necessarily an okay hi <laughs> the way you smile why did you smile <laughs> i don't look like a shrink no you don't <laughs> but continue. you look like you're going for one bear <laughs> nice one well, i like i love your shoes though oh thank you it's nice thank you i borrowed it you know is it sure sandal it's sandals actually okay yeah. i love your sandal thank you my president it's actually ah. nice ah i'm blown <laughs> he lost my sandal maybe i'll just start manufacturing it but oh, you're the one that made it no i didn't i can't oh. even claim somebody else's glory <laughs> all right okay. so let's just um how are you feeling genuinely i uh it's hard to explain but i feel grateful i feel loved yes i feel thankful uh, all i'm feeling right now is gratitude honestly appreciation that's all i'm feeling to everybody to to god to everybody who got me here yeah that's all i'm feeling so talking about that support um to be honest the support you have is beyond ordinary you know it it has transcended to a movement i, I haven't seen anybody in the history of big Baba and genuinely the history of African entertainment that has had such a movement, yeah? And I feel like a lot of that is inspired by the fact that you gave people what they were really looking for in 2020, which is hope. It's a pandemic here and a lot of people lost jobs. A lot of people, you know, especially in the creative industry, oh, yeah. started doubting, you know, the possibility of them ever becoming great shows stopped um but you just came into the picture and people saw an artist you know that was literally like struggling you said it yourself you came to the house to promote your ep yeah. and then you just landed on the biggest platform on the continent and you didn't just land on the biggest platform you visualized it you were even your the housemates favorite because every time your song comes on you see them hyping you because they really enjoy your sound down to the task how you creatively like contributed to the tax and you won most of the tax that had to do with singing so your artistry and how good you are with your artistry is never you know um, to be questioned so I, I wanted to just sort of take us back how was it for you as an emerging artist from your uni lad days struggling can you just share that journey with us and how you now you know arrived here <laughs> I just, I think I'm going to, because a lot, there's a lot to say when it comes to that part of my life, like the whole process of trying to get things done without funds, without time. I, I remember that 
okay let me just pick it up from 2015 that was when i decided to record young black and gifted that's the ep ybag yeah. i'll put it out in 2016 i've i had the idea since 2014 so see it took me two years to even get the recordings done because of fund yeah i knew the the sound had to be quality so there were a lot of me starving myself while I was in school. There were a lot of uh, me, me refusing to buy some textbooks, hmm. knowing that all I had to do is just listen and try to read online instead of buying textbooks and yeah. shit. Me refusing to uh, have fun the way my other people were having fun, like go to the clubs and everything. Yeah. Me refusing to over, overspend I got basically just reduced everything during that 2014 to 2015, put up a whole lot of funds for myself, paid producers to work. I know I worked with Echo, I worked with Bola Touch, and I worked with Danny B on that EP. There were times when I would walk. <laughs> yeah, this, this is all cruise, Sha. There were times when I and Bola, I, Bola is a very wonderful guy. As a, as a producer, I paid him for a bit one day with everything I had on me. And he was like, have you eaten? I said, no. I was like, ah, so wait, what is going to happen? I, said, I don't know. Wait, let me get this straight. You paid a producer with every single... Yeah, the time. last money I had on me, like 20K. I, was, I just put it together and made sure that I paid him so we can get the second song done. So he was not happy eating, and I said, no, I haven't. <laughs> like, he doesn't understand. So what am I doing exactly? I'm giving him all the money that I have. Yeah. Say, should not worry, I'll be fine. Should not worry, I'll be fine. Because at that point, I felt like, yeah, I would just probably call at home and start crying or something, or do yeah. something, basically. But then the guy insisted, and he just gave me part of the money. I'm not going to tell you how much he gave me, but he gave me part of the money, and he took me. And I think his, his house was at Suriliri then. He took yeah. me to Suriliri where we were supposed to work. He bought food for me still. And yeah, so that's Bola. And there's Echo. There's Echo who says, leave the money for now. That's Echo. In case you guys don't know who Echo is, Echo produced King by Fireboy. Echo mm -hmm. co-produced What Type of Dance Is This? Echo produced Hip Hop by Lacon. Echo produced Who is Lacon by Lacon. Echo to told me, leave the money. Now, you know how much I want, yeah? Yeah. Leave the money. Let's do everything. You'll be paying as you're seeing the money. Wow. That's Echo. And there's Danny B who also did the same thing. So, so, yeah. so I feel like for me, it's a bit... Yeah, I've had bad experiences. I've also had good experiences where people were very generous because they see, I feel like they see what I'm trying to do and they just support with whatever it is they can use to support. But then I've also seen instances where people be like, they don't really care. Yeah. It's, it's, my, it's work for me, regardless of who you are, you have to pay before. And that's the way life works. You're not supposed to feel like people are supposed to help you because, no, because people have the right to say no. You, you need to get used to people telling you no. It's yeah. a normal thing doesn't mean the person is bad it's just that's life so that's it for me in school there are lots of times I would freestyle there are lots of times I would I did a lot in school when it comes to Unilag yeah. but for the most notable ones for me was Young Black and Gifted while I was the recording process trying to get everything together then after recording now settling and like okay now you have a body of work how do you put it out money so that's the issue but regardless, I put it out and it gathered some kind of reception and it was yeah. okay for me. Okay, so now, in sharing your journey, you've you know, only mentioned um, your journey as regards music and how people helped you and also how you got a lot of no's, yeah? Um, what made you so sure that this is what you are meant to be? Because there's something also peculiar about you, that is your confidence. From day one, people could sense that confidence, and irrespective of, I think confidence is the strongest outfit anybody can wear. 
because people mm -hmm. see through you automatically. Even down to your lyrics, I'm a god in the human body. It exudes confidence. So what, what made you so sure that this is your past? Because we have a lot of people that are working on their dreams, but because of then the it hasn't come the to wrong fruition, path. they feel like, I beg you, let's first of all, maybe get a nine to five before pursuing it. Why didn't you try to get in nine to five? Why didn't you try to do something else while you pursue the career? Well, I actually did while I was in school. I, I did lots of internships, okay. but I didn't do nine to five because music. I felt music wasn't my. I did nine to five because you need money to do the music. Yeah. Your you can't be getting money for your upkeep, using it to do music. So what are you going to use to, for your upkeep then? Mm -hmm. So I just I did internships. That's where. <laughs> the truth is, if I'm not an artist, I'll probably be a footballer. If I'm not a footballer, I'll probably be something that I'm still going to actually be. But the thing is, for me, it has always been music ever since I was a kid. It's always been music. And I had no doubt about it. Yeah. I had not one bit of doubt because it, it comes, it's like a gift. Yeah, I had to work hard to get to this level where some things come easy, but it doesn't mean... Yeah, I'm talented, but I have worked hard on myself musically to get to this point where I am. In a sense that I remember the days when I would go to the cyber cafe. I used to pay like 100 naira for one hour then. <laughs> and this, this is what I'm going to do. I'll go there with like, um, I think, probably 500 naira a yeah? I'll pay for one hour. Then they used to print for 50, 50 naira. Mm -hmm. So I'll just go there, get the, one of the best rap songs in the world then, probably No Love, that's Eminem and Lil Wayne. Mm -hmm. I dropped the word, Eminem and Lil Wayne, Fast Lane, Bad Meets Evil. Mm -hmm. Get all the lyrics, print them out, then go back home, put their efforts in. Wow. And start rapping, and start rapping, and start rapping, and start rapping. What I was teaching myself to do then was not how to rap. I was teaching myself how to do fast rap, hmm. how to control my breath when I'm rapping. That was just that. Whole, that whole process was for that technique of rap. There are other ones when I just say, okay, now nah, it's time to listen to Jay Z. Yeah. It's time to listen to Andre. Hmm. And that was just for flows. Wow. And piecing of words together. Now all the times when I say it's time to listen to Lil Wayne, it's time to listen to Eminem. And that was for puns, for punchlines. And there are other times when I say it's time to listen to MI, it's time to listen to Vector. And that was for the relativity, how you can relate with this thing to where you are from. Yeah. So all these processes, I've actually gone through them and I'm still going through them. I will still tell you that I still listen to these people today for the same thing. Wow. I still listen to Black Bones today for some things. I listen to All My Late today for things. I listen to Oxlade. I listen to Fireboy. I listen to Yusuf. I listen to Brainy. I listen to every artist you can ever imagine hmm. or think of for a piece of knowledge. And that's so. Hmm. I know I could rap. But to get to the level where I feel like I would be able to do anything with 26 alphabets. Hmm. I needed to listen to a lot of people. I needed to put in a lot of hard yeah. work on myself. That's where the confidence is that it is where I, this is what I want to do. So I need to do, do yeah, like there's, there's a line. Somebody says, say, departed, don't start it if you can't finish hard. Hmm. And there's no point doing it at all if you're not going to do it well. I am super blown away by your intentionality. Because it's one thing to have a dream, it's another thing to be intentional about how to go about your dream. So it's basically like you've created a structure for yourself and you're following that structure to get to your desired goal. Exactly. That is totally amazing. Um, I also noticed that you're barely out of the house, yet you have already recorded a verse with DJ Neptune. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> No, we know. Don't worry. It's not like you are. Uh, he has played it already. I know he has. You know. But it's just, it's yeah. That's the only thing I really missed about the outside world. Trust me. You still I can't have, how do you still find time to go to the studio? Why would I? Uh, is it not my job? Hmm. That's the first thing. Lacon is first of all an artist, though. 
don't get it wrong. Lecon, first of all, Lecon is an artist. Mm. So it's my job. Okay, so um, also taking it back to before Big Brother, and I always like to say you're unique like this because I have a lot of your friends who are my friends okay. that tell me your unique -like stories, so to say. Um, let's go a bit to the emotional side. Um, what was your what was your interaction with women? Okay. So we understand Lacon, the true artist. So we want to understand Lacon as the emotional being. I was having a conversation with V, and then she said something that you are like her thermostat. You know, you know how to sort of calm her down because she's like fire, and you're like ice. I'm just paraphrasing. I, I understand. Yes, I'm just paraphrasing. So we need to understand that emotional side of you. Um, one thing I know is you're in control of your emotions. You're in control of how you react. See, emotions, sadness, anger, happiness, uh, grief. No, okay, not grief. Uh, scratch grief. Uh, sadness, anger, happiness, pain. All those things, they are emotions. They are things that your, your, your body kind of, or your mind kind of suggests to your brain. Yeah. That this is... I don't know who suggests it, but the shark comes, shark, mm. and your body will start going into it. That this is the feeling, this is the feeling. For every situation that happens, mm. one feeling, there will be multiple options of emotions that you can feel to it. So if they are suggestions, that means you can ignore them. Yeah. Okay. You can choose to ignore some emotions, yeah. depending on the scenario. For me, it's not something that you just do. As a person, you're not born with it. I don't think anybody is. Mm. But it's just me from ever since I've understood that. If I actually say, when you say no to me, I can choose to re rationalize with you and try and see the reason why you said no. Mm. Like put myself in your shoes, then wait. Like, so I understand that, yeah, cool. Anybody can say no to anybody. Any, anybody can say something to anybody. It's a liberal world. Mm. And that, the issue with a liberal world is anybody can say anything to anybody. If you don't like that thing, you are still free to say, I don't like that thing. I will not accept that thing. Mm. And that other person is still free to say, you can't like that thing. And that other person is still free to say, I don't want to. That's the whole thing about a liberal world is everybody can talk. But now you, now you go corner say, in this world, how do I cope as an emotional person? Mentally, yeah. how do I cope? It's to not allow these things affect you. Amazing. You know, when people... Because when people talk about how smart you are and how intelligent you are, sometimes a lot of people might not see it because you might not be able to, some people, like, I might, we might not be able to just sort of see it off the TV. I mean, yeah. You might see moments, but having a one-on-one -on -one experience, it's becoming realer, you know, <laughs> unquote, to me how smart you are. Okay, so, but like I said, you know, this is, this is, this is, this is an interview of contrast, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, so when I was talking about your emotional side, you know, um, I wanted to just backdate it to like your first girlfriend. You know, oh, my first it? girlfriend. Yeah. What was ah, it dating your first girlfriend? My first girlfriend. Um, okay. Thing about all my girlfriends, they, they, all my past girlfriends were kind of, they were always older than me. Okay. So it's not like I go out and seek women that are older than me. It's just like we have conversations when you meet a girl you have conversations with the girl and you guys kind of develop a bond and then one thing leads to another and then the person that just now say hey wait self, how old are you and i'll say my <laughs> age and i'll be like what <laughs> so it's just that i feel like i learned a lot from yeah most of my friends are older than me most of my girlfriends were older than me i learned a lot from them but Really, for me, emotionally, it has always been a, a make sure that you think about it very well. Make sure that your brain works along with it. Mm -hmm. But there are different situations that I feel like I would put myself in because I did not think about it well. And then there are different situations that you just put yourself in because you think about it and you're like, eh, anything that should happen should happen. Yeah. But for me, that always... There's always been a bit of both okay. for me emotionally. Yeah. And I, I, I feel like love, when it comes to love, love is a very focal thing. So people shouldn't just throw the word around. 
I feel like you can't say you love somebody in two weeks of yeah. meeting the person. So that's always been my, I feel like it's something you would meet somebody, grow with the person, be in a relationship, then improve and grow the whole process, the love process from there. Yeah. So, and I think that's kind of the mentality I took into the house still. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, amazing. So you've always been a sexual. Um, yes. Someone that is really literally just, uh, you connect mentally. Yeah, I'm attracted to intelligence attracted so to much. That's, that's amazing. Um, I think another area we need to sort of talk about now is the fan wars. What's the best way to address this issue of fan wars? Exactly. I remember I said something to an housemate in the house. I said, mm -hmm. when you are sad, there are millions of people that are sad. When you are unhappy, there are millions of people that are unhappy. Yeah. So I feel like we are no longer housemates. We're no longer living for ourselves. Anything that makes you become so huge that people are ready to go all out for you and talk down on other people for you or uplift other people because of you, then you're, you've become a role model and you've become an influencer, so yeah. to speak. So me, I think it's you. Speak. Speak things that would reflect your persona to your People, to the people you influence. Mm. When you leave it, they see that this is the kind of life that this person lives. If I have, I mean, I'm the kind of person that says, if I see that the person I'm following is doing something, yeah, regardless of my orientation or something, I will still take something from that person. Yeah. I think the most intelligent person I know, the most intelligent person I've ever heard speak is Sean Carter. Because when he speaks, you know that he knows what he's saying. Yeah. And he's so confident about the fact that this thing is, is a fact. So there's nothing you're going to say that's going to change. True. So I'm learning from him. Hmm. This is what I'm saying. That if you feel like what your people, what your fans are doing is what you want them to portray. But on a general note and that thing that they're portraying for a fact is not good because that thing that also good is also subjective yeah but that if you see that that thing is not who you want who you are because yeah. if my fans go somewhere now and they say they blah 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 they do this they say oh yeah. lecon's fans do did this mm. and that's coming from, back exactly mm. so what me so i would always for, do yeah. what me i would always do is my people icons if you love me it's because you love the kind of person i am mm -hmm. you see this kind of person i am i only promote love and light regardless of any situation mm -hmm. you see what what talking what uh i don't know the word to use what uh what conflict when conflict happens and it results into violence what would end it? See, Google, you, you can go and Google it. Ask, when two people, they, they punch each other, finish. Yeah. How they go settle up? Calm down, calm down. What's it happen? Exactly. And you go start talk. Ah, he do like this for me, he do like this for me, he do like this. What ended the fight? Conversation. What mm. do you think started the fight? Ah, Nami, they talk to like that. Blah, blah, blah. Conversation. Mm. So remove that violence out of it and just move from conversation to conversation. And because it's still for every war fought in this world. Hmm. That's why you find Treaty of Paris. Yeah. That's why you find Treaty of Westphalia. That's why you find the uh, uh, Treaty of Versailles. Because it's not still talk, go end the fight. So why not just come off fights, talk from yeah. the argument, settle it with talk. Wow. If you see that this person is not in a situation that they can talk, calm down. Hmm. Talk to the person later. It's, that, it's just that simple. There's no need for violence. There's no need to, to be aggressive towards anybody. You can actually ignore things. It is possible. You can do it. When somebody says something you don't conform with or you don't agree with, or you know that it is wrong, you can choose to ignore. If you see that this person you're trying to correct is being yeah. difficult, just ignore. Amazing. So basically what you're trying to say is there is no need to push out negative energy there isn't it's either you ignore or you communicate exactly and the truth is for me right now 
this space that we are is very focal, focal for our lives moving forward. Mm. Now you have changed one person's life. That's yeah. my life. But you don't know that in return you have changed the lives of millions of other people that their lives are connected to mine. True. So let's know that this is a very important part. Uh, because I won, yes, it's a big deal. A wonderful thing. But like I'm always saying, it's not just about winning the show. It's about winning in life. Mm. And for me to win in life, for you to win in life, me and you guys, we have to come together and make sure that we push this love and light agenda to the rest of the world. It's something that we need to keep living and not just say it, put it in your everyday life. The most important thing for you is to grow, block out the noise, block out the negativity, focus on what is positive, focus on who you love, the people that you care about, your family, the people that are closest to you, what you want for yourself, how you're going to use yourself to grow other people. Because in return, it grows you. Yeah. You grow as a person. So keep focusing on love and light. And this is for everybody listening, regardless of being an icon or you're not an icon. The truth is, in this life, you exist not for yourself alone. Yeah. You exist for other people. That's why you are loved by other people. That's why you love other people. So moving forward, I think it's something everybody needs to always put at the back of their mind that my actions affect other people. Mm. If this thing is done to me, would I like it? Yeah. No. If you would like it, it still doesn't mean you should do it to yourself because a part of him is in you, a part of you is in me, a part of me is in him. It's that it's just that it's we a are a part of, of life. yeah, we are a part of every exactly. I am a part of you guys. So if I hurt myself, I am hurting you guys. If I hurt you, I am hurting millions of other people. So let's understand that we need what we need to do is spread love and light, honestly. Life is that simple. Okay, Lecon. I always say this Lecon because that's how the big brother Lecon Ibuka calls you. Lecon. <laughs> they don't call you Lecon. It's Lecon. Amazing. I, I once tweeted something that there are two people that blew up this year that has laid in their names on my lay. And Lecon. <laughs> okay, so I mean the fans you guys have heard it, whether you're an Elite, Wiredem Gang, um, Superior, Icon, at the end of the day we all need each other to survive and Collaboration is key. You know? Exactly. I, I always say that collaboration is the new competition. That we're all stronger together. Um, What's so, better than one billionaire? Two. So speaking of collaboration, and we're going to end on this note. Um, I know that you've already, like everybody knows it's just music. That's your agenda. Yeah, um, no, not just music. I'm obviously looking into delving into other forms of entertainment. But yes, music is number one. Okay, so what other forms of entertainment? Yeah, are you I'm looking, looking to go into acting. Mm. If I need to learn okay. to improve more on that, I'm open to that. Amazing. I'm looking to go into a uh, whole of um, humanitarian. Okay. Yeah, because I am, everybody knows who I am when it comes to the health sector. Like, I am a sickle cell guy. Yeah. Not, uh, not that I go through it, but I still understand that this is something that a lot of people need to know about mm -hmm. the existence of the SC genotype, CC genotype, AC genotype. AC is actually not sickle cell. Yeah. But CC, SC, and SS are the weak genotypes. Mm -hmm. When people have these genotypes, and a lot of people don't even know that CC and SC exist. Yeah. To now talk of looking into how to find ways for people to live with them mm -hmm. in a in a good way. Yeah. So it's, it's a lot of journey that we have to go on together, the awareness first, then looking for how research can be put into these things and find a way to work through it and make sure that people live healthy lives. Thank you so much, Likon. Um, You're welcome. You've been nothing but exceptional. Thank you very much. And just keep being you. Um, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you some people um, have certain mindsets as to um, how you handled certain things in the house. Yeah. Um, but like you said, it's, it's all about perspective. Um, I like the fact that you've preached the message of peace. And um, I'm pretty sure that, uh, I don't want to go into details, but I'm sure that the, the Lecon I now know and the Lecon I think I knew would definitely reach out um, a hand 
and communicates and resolved any unresolved matters. Exactly. Um, so I wish you all the best. Thank uh, you very much. Just keep being you. Thank you very if much. If you ever need anything apart from money. <laughs> I'm here. Because <laughs> I don't know what kind of money I can give you. We already have, uh, if not more than 110 uh, Dangote, million naira. Dangote is still looking for money. Oh. I know, but uh, hey, I'm, I'm still looking on for money. About oh. tax. Lagos State I government. They are still looking for see. Bill Gates is still looking for money. Oh. <laughs> Even money is looking for money. Even money is looking for money. <laughs> exactly. Maji, thank you very much for having me. This was fun. Okay, um, so I just finished having this interview with this wonderful person, Hero Daniels. <laughs> and I have to say, uh, it's been different. Because this, this one was much more uh, thought-provoking. Because it's, 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 it kind of goes deeper beyond the, the normal type of interview that, yeah, because I had to talk about the reason for the reason of the kind of person that I am. Like, the way I try to grow myself, the, the things that allowed me become the kind of person that you saw. So this interview has actually been fun. Has actually been the kind of discussions that I would love to always have moving forward. And yeah, it's a good one. <laughs>